There is going to be a little extra tennis tomorrow because a lot of the women's matches got postponed today because of the rain. Tomorrow the forecast is saying a very small chance of rain, so I'm pretty much thinking there's not going to be any. And uh, I just want to add one other thing. Right now on the TV, Sloane Stevens is beating Ursula Wadwanska pretty badly. And I think that had that match, which they thought might have gotten delayed till tomorrow, had that happened, I think that would have hurt Sloane a lot because she would have been... Uh, I have a weird feeling she would have come out really flat if this had to be it tomorrow. And But tonight, the, 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 the New York crowd, and then she's been waiting all day, I think that helped her a lot to get this in tonight. And right now she's winning pretty easily. Anyways, so tomorrow we are going to have... Uh, and I want to call tomorrow, I'm not going to call it a dud day for the third day in a row because when I call these dud days... We've had that incredible upset with Duvall, the incredible Blake Karlovic match tonight. It's a couple other incredible matches. So, yeah, there's been a lot of matches that have no bearing probably on the final outcome of the Open, but they've been amazing matches. So, tomorrow the matches actually look good too. That that will have some bearing on the Open. <clears throat> Anyways, starting off, and one of them right away is Panetta and Arani because Arani is ranked four or seated fourth. Um, but Panetta, I saw her Friday practicing, and she was. Uh, really seemed to be working on her um, offense and her forehands. And she uh, really beat Nicole Gibbs really bad and looked good doing it. So I think this could be a really tough match. It's, it's going to be very interesting. Because when Panetta was at her best, she was probably better than Arani at the hard court. Not probably, she was better than Arani at hard courts. So she's not her best right now. Ronnie is at her best, but I, I just think this is going to be a tough one. This will be very interesting. I wouldn't be surprised by an upset. I will ref you know what? I'll call it. Uh, nah, I don't know yet enough how good. Uh, no, I'll call it. Heck with it. Panetta upset over Ronnie. Okay, Serena. Um, Vasca Bivis had a good year, but she's been hurt a little bit just lately, and, and, and that's no way to play Serena. So that's that. Uh, Berloke also had some physical issues in his match with Geraldo, and it was a, a, a match that went over two days long. Uh, so that's no way to go in against Roger Federer. Um, Berloke is a fighter, so he may take a set. He has the kind of game that can bother Roger a little bit. He may take a set, but, but Roger takes the ball so early, just like uh, Geraldo does, and uh, that will bother Berloke even more. Uh, what else do we have? We move on down. That's, this is all on Ash. At night at an Ash, we're going to have Wozniak and Sheepers, and I'm surprised that's a night match, to be honest with you. Um, that's the end of the road for Sheepers, let's put it that way. And then Dutra Silva and Nadell, again, not real pleasant match. I mean, this is going to be a blowout. Uh, Dutra Silva's had a big year, but he had a marathon epic match with Pospisil that went over two days and into a, uh, on court 14 and second day, into a tiebreaker in the fifth set, 12-10. A lot of controversy. Um, that's no way to go into play Nadell. <laughs> so if you thought it was bad against Harrison, this might be even worse. Uh, Emily Bouchard, this is a neat one. Um, Bouchard, uh, the young girl, very athletic, got by Pis Pliskova. <clears throat> but Kerber is finding some form now. And I do think Bouchard's played a lot of tennis this year. And this could be kind of the end of the road, I think. Uh Batisto Gutz had a really good year, but not against Ferrer. Uh, I don't think so. <clears throat> and uh, Wozniak had missed a lot of time. Last time she played was in March. But she actually looked pretty good against DeLonk. But this is Azarenka now, so ah, straight sets. Okay, so those aren't... So oh, here's a big one. Won't start before 5.30, it says here. Isner Monfils. Um, Monfils was only serving about 105 miles per hour first serve, so, you know, Unger wasn't anywhere to be found, so that was an easy match, but <clears throat> Monfils doesn't seem 100% to me. He's moving well, though, and maybe a, another couple days, and now he'll feel a little better in the hip area that he hurt in, uh, Winston-Salem, but even at 100%, I mean, Isner's having, is on fire right now, so you gotta go with Isner. A lot will depend, though, how close it's going to be. It's going to depend on Monfils' health. So, uh, but you should never count Monfils out completely. Okay, Svitolina had a big upset of Sabokova. Uh, again, I think, you know, some people are having trouble with these lively balls. They're big, and they look like they might be slow, but they're not. They jump. I think Sabokova is one of the people that did. But Svit Svitolina and Mikhail both have uh, handled them well. 
and can use the extra pace that they're getting from the balls. But Svitolina has by far been in better form, and I think she's going to beat Mikel. Uh, Ivanovic and Dolgaru. Dolgaru had a real tough one with Lepchenko, and she's been injured all year, so I think that's the end of the road against Ivanovic. But she will push Ivanovic harder than Tatchvili did. So it's going to be interesting to see if Ivanovic has a problem with these balls when she's being pushed hard. She may have a little problem controlling them, but we'll see. But she should get by Dolgaru. Uh, Manorino loves these conditions. His slice... Um, this is in the grandstand on the variable court, so it will take the slice low. And, and Sam Query is always up and down, so I think this could be actually be a really good match. Uh, Query should come up on top, but it may turn into a crazy five-setter. Uh, Raonic should have no problem with Andujar. Maybe a struggle here and there, but it shouldn't be a problem. Ormachea is going to give it to Lasicki. I think Lasicki can pull this out in the third. But I wouldn't be surprised. I, I think she's going to pull it out because Ormachea is more of a clay court girl. But this is not going to be easy. Ormachea's forehand is on fire. She loves these lively balls. Uh, Cornet and Tom Tomjanovic. I think Tom Tomjanovic's going to threaten Cornet. Uh, I think she may get tight again like in a third set. But I think that's another tough one. Uh, I think Daniel Evans beats Tomic. I really do. He's on fire unless he tires out. But Tomic is looking worn out anyway all year basically. So I think this is the end of the road. I think Daniel Evans is just going to ride the wave until he gets tired. Uh, Brad DeClon was really starting to look tired. He got by DeShepper in a really good match. He's having a great summer. This The tennis may be catching up to him finally. Um, Lopez has not been in good form at all, though. So maybe Klon takes the first set, but then I think Lopez eventually does win either way. Uh, Nara beats Kirstea. Uh, Kirstea's... Unless Nara is exhausted from all the qualifying and everything, but I think she has one more match in her. She's in better, and at this point, she's a little bit in better form. Kristea's had a great summer, but she really did hurt her uh, abdominal in uh, New Haven, and she struggled past Fishman. So I think Nara is gonna gonna take this and then probably poop out the rest of the draw. <clears throat> Gasquet should beat Robert. Though Robert is really playing well now, but that should be Gasquet. Risk and Barthol's a good one, but I think Barthol's finding her form now just in time. She'll take the girl from Pittsburgh. Uh, Cole Schreiber and Vaseline, I think uh, that's uh, Cole Schreiber, though he hasn't really had a challenge yet. He had that young kid who won the uh, playoffs, and that really wasn't any preparation. And uh, But Vaseline hasn't had much of a challenge. I, I, I think Cole Schreiber. Uh, Peng Shui almost passed out from dizziness on match point. But she did get through it. Uh, I, I think Kuznetsova is going to wear her down. Uh, Maximo Gonzalez, the veteran 30-year-old clay quarter, unbelievable, got through qualifying, beating hard court guys. Then he beats Janowitz, who had a, a serious shoulder injury. So I think this has got to be the end of the run, though he could beat Sock, because Sock isn't stable in the mind. He's still young and immature. But I do think if, if, if he keeps his head together even a little bit, he should beat Gonzalez. That should be the end now. Um, Dancevic, I don't know how he got through Ito in qualifying. I don't even know how uh, he got through Haas, Robin Haas, in his first round. Uh, Robredo is going to make him work. This has got to be the end of the road for him. <clears throat> uh, Hantakoven, Duval, incredible victory by Duval. Uh, I just see a letdown. She's got to have a letdown here, so I've got to go with Hantakova. Uh, but Hentakova's form has been really unpredictable all year, so this could be another crazy upset by Duvall, but I just can't. I, she's got to let down at some point. Klabanova coming back from cancer, big stuff, great stuff, but Yankovic should take this. Um, Tipsarovic is definitely not in great form, but uh, Duty Sailor went five sets, and he's played a decent amount of tennis. Uh, he's older. He gets down on himself really quick. I do think Tipsarovic should take this in four. Uh, Kvitova Jovanovski. Jovanovski's not in great form, but uh, I think Petkovic had serious problems with the ball. She really had trouble keeping it in the court. It was jumping off her racket. She was coming from using the pen balls that are light, but they don't jump as much. And these balls might be a tad heavier, but they really jump off the racket. So, I, I, in other words, what I'm saying is Jovanovski, I wouldn't go by her win over Petkovic and say she's doing great right now. Uh, but then Kvitova is completely unpredictable, but she should win this. Even if she decides to blow one set, she should still win it. Glusko and Vickery. I think I'm saying that right, but this Vickery girl is number six junior in the world. 
Uh, she upset Luchik in the first round, uh, got in through the, the playoffs, the 18 playoffs. But I think this is the end of the road. Glusko is, is in decent form this summer and doing well right now. <clears throat> Kanepi should beat Shmidlova. But Shmidlova was the number 10 junior last year. She's having a great year this year from the Slovak. Uh, may win a set, but Kanepi should take that. Vesnina should take Nap. Again, that could go three sets. But I think she can wear her down. Uh, Heidermaro, I think he loses to Kukishkin, the, the qualifier. Kukishkin is a hardcourt guy. He seems healthy unless he gets hurt out of nowhere, which can happen. But he should take that. Dottage is going to be exhausted. Davidenko is going to be exhausted. But Davidenko had a, a sixth love fifth set against Ryan Williams. So hopefully that gives him a little more steam. Dottage is the better player. He's more informed this year. He's, he's been, had a much better year. But he really looked exhausted at the end of that Verdasco match. I just can't believe he can get through this. So I've got to take Davidenko. Unless Davidenko is hurt or something, which has been happening like every other match for him. But that should be Davidenko. Dottage looked tired. Uh, Makarova and Maddox Sands. Makarova's been doing pretty well this year, but um, I think in the home crowd, I think Maddox Sands is going to pull this out in three. And Makarova's going to get tight. Uh, Tursanov and Ru Rufan. Rufan. Uh, Tursanov, though, this should be close too. Both guys are going to be a little tired. Tursanov is much better at this, these hard courts, but it's going to be maybe a four or five setter. Uh, maybe four sets. Debrito has done well, but it could be the end of the road. Karolinko, Debrito may get a set, but maybe not. Maybe two tight, uh, two sets, close sets. Go for Karolinko. Georgie, I think she beats Shea, Shea, uh, Shea. Uh, Shea, I, I, I'm trying to, who did, uh, she she beat Zakopalova, uh, but Zakopalova must have had something wrong with her again. I mean, she's been up and down with her fitness all year, and she looked ready to go for this tournament, but then it wasn't even close. The other thing that could have happened, it wasn't on TV, but the balls. Zakopalova is really aggressive, so the ball might have been jumping all over her. Well, Georgie has played, she's aggressive too, but she doesn't hit it as hard as Zach. And she has went through qualifying, and she got through the first round easily. She's saving a lot of energy because none of her matches are that close. She is really taking the ball early and, and enjoying these balls. So I think she's going to win again and get to the third round here. Uh, Safarova's in no good form, so I'll take Vinci. In fact, i like to see Vinci. I think she can get to the semis. Uh, Vikic has been struggling a little bit after a good year and a good grass season, but suddenly she's finding form again while Halep, has been in great form, but played way too much tennis and looked really tired in her first round match. So this is going to be another tough one for Halep, and she may go down here. In fact, I will go out on a limb and say she loses in three sets to V-Kick. Okay, and any others? The rest we'll have is doubles, and we should have Ingus tomorrow as well, and her doubles re-debut -de at the U.S. Open.